consume me, Lord, until I'm no more. Consume me, Lord, until I'm no more. Consume me, Lord, till I'm no more. My prayer, consume me, Lord, consume me, Lord, till I'm no more, consume me, Lord, till I'm no more.
This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your holy praise. Leave me, oh Jesus, in me. This is my daily bread. This is my day. Jai Anir 
Tell him you waited.
bless the name of Jesus. The name above all names. The name exalted above all the other names. The name of Jesus. The Bible tells me that at the mention of the name Jesus, every knee bows and every tongue confesses that He is the Lord. Tonight, as we worship, as we pray, as we go deeper into the word, just worship the name of Jesus. Just speak out the name of Jesus. Because whoever shall call upon the name of Jesus shall be saved. I don't know what you might be going through. I don't know what circumstance you might be going through. But at the mention of the name Jesus, every cancer disappears. Every tumor disappears. Every virus dies. Every situation bows down. Every mountain must be moved. Every seas will be parted. Every darkness light shall shine. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. I'd like to welcome you back from that session. Uh, it is really hard to transition from that place. But we need to have a balanced diet and we need to have both. We need to go deeper into the word of God. And tonight we are blessed uh, to have in our midst the man of God. I know him as a prophet, as an apostle, as a worshiper, as a friend, and as a man of God. And yes, let's give it up for Kenneth Mobiru. Thank you. In our midst. Yes. Uh, so tonight we'll be sharing about something that we need clarity on. What is the role of worshippers in the kingdom, the kingdom of heaven? And yeah, we will be getting to know the difference between the, king of, the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. And the role of worshippers has suits both scenarios. Uh, tonight with me, again, we still have the beloved BPM in our midst, our very own worshipper. Uh, she's in the house. Yeah, that beautiful smile. Yeah, she will be also dissecting scripture here to tell us the role of a worshiper in the kingdom. Yeah, but without further ado, I would like to bring greetings uh, from our man of God, Pastor Samuel Nwamanya. Thank you very much for allowing us and giving us this opportunity to wear his worship. Uh, this was inspired of the Lord to him, and he said we need to be doing this, and our lives are not remaining the same. Uh, we are live here at Butte, the city church. Uh, you can follow us on our, our Twitter, uh, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, at Butte, the city ministry, 01. And yeah, you'll be getting us. Uh, our official page has a blue logo. I know there is another page which has a brown one, but our official page has a blue logo, or uh, one of the most recent pictures of our man of God. Yeah. God bless you and be blessed as we share. Yeah, right away. Give us a preamble on our topic. What is the role of a worshiper in the kingdom of God? Um, you cannot understand the role of a worshiper if you don't know who a worshiper is. Um, the place of worship is a place of love. Worshippers are generally lovers. I love a man that sang a song called I love your presence I'm a lover of your presence I'm a lover of your presence can we sing that song? I'm a lover of your presence. 
I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence, Lord. Now that man sings from a place of love. You see, all worshippers sing from that place. Because the primary reason or role of a worshipper is to burn incense. In the Old Testament, we used to, to bring the burn and then we put them at the altar. But now that the tabernacle is within a man's heart, the Lord feeds. Oh, he draws from your heart mm. that incense of love. Mm. That's why it is very difficult to worship God with bitterness. Mm. It is very difficult to worship God out of a place of competition. We are not competitors yeah. because we bask from him. Mm. We worship from his presence. Mm. Are you picking me? Mm. So, worshipers are lovers. It reminds me of a man called Solomon. Solomon comes into the temple. He, he offers the most wonderful sacrifice unto the Lord, which he did out of love. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. But now here comes the priests. This, the, the, the priests, the prophets of the time. But they could not fulfill their priestly role because a man of love has done it. So when we were singing that song, my beloved is, mm. are you getting me? Mm. Is a man that looks at God as his lover. And that is the position every worshiper ought to be in. If you're not worshiping from that place, then you are a competitor. You're trying to showcase your voice than putting forward what we call the love of God, the incense. Primarily, that is the role of a worshiper, is to draw God. But you cannot draw God if you don't know how to love, because God is love. Yeah, Jesus says, if you love me, mm -hmm. you will follow my commandments. Yes. Uh, why am I drawing upon that? Is because wa w as worshippers, it's true, we have to draw from a place of love. Yes. But we need to, to understand that by loving, we have to keep mm -hmm. what he says. Yes. You cannot love me and do otherwise from mm. what you know I want, mm. what you know I like. Mm. That's why um, in, in Leviticus mm. and verses 26, chapter mm. 26, mm. Uh, I want to mainly stop on verses 31, but if you read from higher up, it shows that if you do not actually obey mm. the commands of God, says, mm. I will lay your cities waste and bring your sanctuaries to desolation. Mm. I will not smell the fragrance of your sweet aromas. Mm. We understand that worship is a fragrance. Yes. Because we burn the incense from the inside. Yes. And we send up that fragrance. Mm -hmm. Just like Abel burnt his offering and mm. that fragrance reached mm. in unto God and he was pleased with him. True. Because he loved him and did what the commandments mm where by then there were even no commandments so the only commandment that was there was the commandment of love mm. of loving on god and mm. having that place of communion you see now it, it brings me to another point we began with love but now there are men that love but out of ignorance that's why proverbs proverbs 25 says counsel in the heart of man is like deep water but a man of understanding will draw it out. Mm -hmm. Understanding. Do you get me? Mm. We have many worshippers, but they don't understand the God that worship. Mm. Because there are terms and conditions, even in our worship. David himself, he had zeal. Mm. Are you getting me? He went and drew the Ark of Covenant, and mm. men lost their lives. Mm. Why? He did not understand. How is this Ark of Covenant? covenant supposed to be moved so he loved but he missed out on the commandment yes because there was already a protocol yes on how to handle the ark of covenant yes so in our day to day to now today we don't have the ark of covenant 
how can a worshiper today know how to conduct worship the right way? Truth. We go back to the very scripture. Because the scripture called, says, counsel in the heart of man. Already there is counsel. There is, there is wisdom. There is wisdom in you. But you need to draw it out. But you cannot draw it out out of love only. You have to have understanding. Amen. Are you picking me? So when you have understanding, then you'll have to worship God. The true God. Because truth is God. Are you picking me? But there are men that worship outside that truth. Mm, I have seen lyrics which you can't trace in the Bible. There. You cannot tell me mm, you're singing my beloved is and then your, me your meditation tells you you still have a curse. What is the beloved going to do to you? What is the beloved your lover God? Are you picking me? Yeah. Your lover is what? God. Now you're drawing back into the outer court. So we have men that sing from the outer court. They worship from the outer court. But now I'm talking of men that sing from the inner court. Those are men that have drawn that counsel out. That wisdom out. Are you getting me? Because they have understanding. This thing happened to a man called Daniel. Hallelujah. There's a, there's a time Daniel prayed and prayed and prayed. And the, the Lord did not bring anointing unto him. No. The Lord did not bring money to him, no. The angel Gabriel tells him, hey, I have come to give you understanding. The other, to give you revelation. So your worship must come from a place of revelation, not necessarily Meanwhile, the man, the man at this time is one of the top counselors. Uh -huh. or the, the, he, he is one of the wise men. Yes. in the country mm. but now god is saying you need understanding yes so what was the issue like did was he lacking understanding revelation can it be in our generation today that the anointed worshiper the anointed man of god still lacks understanding yes you can worship god without understanding one you can worship god by the spirit you can worship god by the gift and talent talent and gift are the same mm. are you getting me and you can worship God hmm? because you, you fully have the experience of who he is. Which means you carry the understanding. That's why he tells John, come up hither because your understanding needs to be elevated. I know you understood me when you sat with me because you were the beloved of all the apostles. But now you lack understanding. That's why everyone that appears, you, you bow down, you call him me. But now, come up hither. That your understanding mm. may be yeah. enlightened. enlightened. Now, Paul comes up and says, renew your mind. Renew. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Are you getting me? Yes. What, what, what does that? The understanding. Mm the revelation, and the truth you know in God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, so our, our viewers, the man is very deep, but I want to break it down a bit. Yeah, so when, when, when Jesus says to John, come up either, uh, you have to take note that he starts by saying, I was in spirit on the day of the Lord. Mm. So the man was already in worship, Yes. And in spirit. Yes. But he needed to go higher. Yes. Or we might say deeper. You see. But he needed to go higher. Mm -hmm. He says, come up higher and I will show you the things which are to be. I mm -hmm. will give you understanding. I will enlighten you. You get my point. That's why up to today, the book of Revelation is one of the simplest books and one of the most sophisticated books. You can either understand it or misunderstand it. But the thing is, at the end of it all, Jesus is Lord. And uh, that is the truth that is important because he says in John 14 that I am the way, the truth, and the life. And even in John 4.21 when he tells us that the hour is coming when people will not worship on this mountain or in Jerusalem, but 
the God is looking for those that will worship him in spirit and in truth. The Father, the only time that God comes up to seek for a man, he's seeking for those that will worship him in spirit and in truth. Sure. Why? Because he's not short of people who are worshiping him. He's not short of worshipers. He's short of true worshipers. So the reason we have this worship buffet here is that we may feed of the truth after we have uplifted our spirits. Yep. That's why we worship that our spirits are uplifted. And then we share the word that the truth may be held strong in us. And at the end of it all, you out there, you shall also be a true worshiper. I know by now you're already being transformed into a true worshiper. You understand what it means to be a worshiper. It is not just to come here and hold a microphone. We understood that you can be a worshiper even without, even without stepping onto this pulpit. Yes. You understand? Because worship goes beyond the realms of music. Even though that could be a starting place, but we know that there is love in there. Mm. There is faith in there. Mm. There is giving. There is sacrifice. There is all the things that you can do. So, seek out what you can do best. Yesterday we were here with a group of friends and we were worshipping and we were also reflecting on the life of the evangelist Reinhard Bonke and we, we realized he said a man said that use me. He, he, he was not satisfied when he started from nothing. He didn't have anyone and he started from nothing. But even when he got 800 people, he was not satisfied. He got 1,000 people, he was not satisfied. He was the first person to orchestrate the building or the construction of the largest tent ever in the world. And it still could, couldn't accommodate people. And he was not satisfied. To the day of his death, he was not satisfied. And guess what? When I listened to his sermons, he was not preaching mysteries. He was only saying, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is healer. Jesus loves you. Meaning that when a man understands worship, it ceases to be, it ceases to be about how sophisticated you want to make your gospel, how el eloquent your speech is, how, how, how well educated you are, how well dressed you are, but it goes to a place of how available you are. Just avail yourself. And God is looking for thee. So if you're not available, he's looking for you, but you are so busy elsewhere. You are so busy in your own world, and uh, we are missing out. The, imagine if, if the evangelist Reinhard Bonke was not available. The millions that got saved wouldn't be Man saved by now. You see, we have men that have gone to schools. It's okay to do training. It's, it's very perfectly okay. Theological training. Yes. Mm. But there is a place whereby you sit at the feet. At the feet of Jesus. And you cannot sit at the feet if you don't love him. Mm -hmm. mm. And you wait on him. Mm. Whereby you're, you're ministering unto the Lord. You make love unto him mm. before you make love unto the congregation. Mm. So what most ministers do, they eye the podium before eyeing the Lord. Are you picking me? The name, the fame. Do you get me? Mm. There is a difference between a man that worships from the experiences of God. You can even feel the touch of the, the worship. Even if his worship is not so aligned to our to the to the to the standards of to music. The standards of music mm. is different. Because he's singing or is worshiping from from that place of love. Mm. And that's what we have eliminated from our churches, mm. from our ministries. Mm. So we, we look for gifts. And gifts have one, okay, gifts are so prodigal. Why do I say that? A gifted man is ever a hawking man. Moves up, up, up and down because he has no time for the Lord. He's like Martha. He doesn't want to sit down at the feet and drink from you cannot give what you don't have. Mm. You can't. 
If you tell men, men, would, men have detectors because every man has an ability to know who is anointed and who is not. Who is filled and who is faking it. You cannot fake the presence of God. You cannot fake God. Men will know whether you were in the wilderness and God touched you or God did not touch you. When a worshiper worships, he opens up the realms of love. Mm. Do you understand? So that place of, of worship opens up the realm and then God himself comes and visits his people. Yeah. Until Good. we reach that place where God asks, what do they want? We've not worshipped. Mm. Because when Solomon gave the best, the scripture says, he asked Solomon, what do you, what want? Do you want? Hallelujah. That is a new revelation of God. When you worship God truly, you must get that question. What do you want? Yes. Amen. Tonight I'm praying that you get that question. What do you want? Uh, yeah, I think it is very kingly because God is a king. It is very kingly in nature. For when a king is pleased, he has to ask, what do you want? Even we see King Herod asks the daughter, hey, you have danced very well, what do you want? Yes. yes. I don't know if any of us have been asked, what do you want? But yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. What do you want? You, I'm going to worship until I hear the question, what do you want? <laughs> sure. Amen. Yeah. So we are we are running short of time. I want to give a few minutes to the beloved PPM to also give her sentiments and then. Okay. I thank the Lord for this opportunity. I might be not a good talker, <laughs> but we as worshippers, we as worshippers into the kingdom of heaven, we are here to lead. Okay, we are not the main leaders, remember. We are not the main leaders. The main leader is the Holy Spirit. And if the Holy Spirit is not there, my dear, we are not leading worship. And uh, it's not that because you're seated behind and then this one on the pulpit is singing, leading you into a song that this is the leader. No. The preachers are your leaders. The singer is a leader. Anyone that is leading you close to God is a leader. But we have a main leader who is the Holy Spirit. Um... Uh, the kingdom of heaven that we are talking about, remember, we have a lot of kingdoms, right? We have the kingdom of the devil. We have the kingdom of God. So I hope we are really talking about the kingdom of God. Because they all do wanting to reach at that place in, to seek worship. Even the devil... It, it has its people <laughs> that are always there, sacrificing themselves eh, mm. to reach that place of, what should I give you? Just like you said. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. People are here in church, but you find someone busy worshipping, worshipping, and you think that is worshipping the God that you're worshipping. My dear, by the way, that's the reason as to why we, we must read the Bibles on our own. Let not the preacher read for you. Let not a friend read for you. Get a book and read it on your own. That's when you will get that understanding to know whom you are worshipping. Praise the living God. Um, uh, here we go to the book of John, chapter 3, verse 5. It says... Jesus answered, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Praise the living God. Unless one is born of water and the spirit. If you are not born of water, if you are not born of the spirit, you cannot worship. You, can be, you cannot become a worshiper of, 
of the kingdom of heaven. You cannot become a worshiper. You can become a worshiper of your own. Because you yourself. I had a friend, I asked that person, are you a born again? And he's like, no. Which religion do you fall into? I think I'm a Protestant. You just think, I must say I think, because I've even never gone to church. So I asked him, how have you lived a life? How have you lived your life since childhood? Um, I think I'm alone. I don't know. <laughs> I've just seen myself growing up. I said, my dear, God loves you. <laughs> God loves you, and you must know him, because you can't be just there and say that I am on my own. Then who created you, and who gave you that chance to be on earth? You must know that God that loved you and created you and allowed you to be on earth. People have been loved by God, but they have left, they're, not, they're no longer on earth. And you can't say that I'm just here. <laughs> that is a typical lie. That is a very great and big lie. So I don't know where you will be falling, but you must know as long as you are living and you're getting whatever you want. Because this person is, a, is, a one, uh, is one of those that have not lacked anything. They have studied, they have done anything, they have, uh, is living a healthy life. I said, wow, this is so great. So if you're not born of the spirit and you're not born of, of water, my dear, we are being a Yeah, the, the Bible says that the flesh begets what? Flesh. Means that the, the flesh gives birth to flesh. Mm. And the spirit gives birth to gives spirit. Birth to spirit. Mm. But God is spirit, and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in yes. truth. Mm. Yes. So we are all born of the flesh. That's why it is very important for you to be born again, mm. so that you can be born of the spirit. That is the only way that you can worship God. Mm. You get my point. Mm. So in case you're watching us and you have not yet given your life to Christ, this is a beautiful time. This is a beautiful opportunity for you mm. to give your life to Christ. Maybe you've had some setbacks and you would like to rededicate your life to Christ and to be a worshiper. This is a beautiful time for you to give back your life to what? To Christ. Yeah, you must be born again, just like John 3, 7 says. Uh, so we want to wrap it up from here. Uh, but if you're watching us, you can pray with us this prayer if you would like to give your life to Christ. Uh, mm -hmm. Dear Jesus, I thank you because you loved me before I ever knew you. I thank you for you gave your life for my life. Today, I dedicate my life to you, Jesus. May you write me in the book of life that on that day, may I be remembered to sit with you in the kingdom of heaven. Father, forgive me of all my sins and wash my, my, my plate clean. Yeah, if you have just said those words, just say amen and you are born again. Okay, uh, feel free to share that link, like, uh, comment, and uh, subscribe. Tomorrow we will be here at 1 p.m., we will be having one of our very own. Uh, he's now pastor. Pastor Wilson will be with us. He was a worshiper with us, and uh, he has moved on to the fellowship to serve in the kingdom of God, but with another church. But he will be with us tomorrow, continuing on the very same topic. We will continue to expound it, just like we do every week. Uh, once again, do not forget the midnight visitation at exactly midnight. We will be live on YouTube. One hour of prayer. Send in your prayer requests. You can even email us at buildthecityministry01 at gmail.com 
or you can call us, text us on our numbers, which are on our social medias, and uh, your life will not remain the same. Uh, thank you. God bless you. See you next time.